Hello and welcome to another episode of Dave's Geek Stuff. And in this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to generate this uh, visualization here of an artificial feed forward neural network. Um, I needed to make this for uh, a video for the backdrop of a band. Um, and the one that I actually uh, ended up with, which you would have seen in the intro, um, was a lot bigger than this. Um, and I thought about making it where, you know, I make each individual sphere and then connect them by splines. And basically these are just spheres and some splines connecting them, which have um, a cloner object. Each one, each connection has a cloner object which uh, uses the spline as the path and then it has some uh, different size spheres underneath that just kind of randomly iterate over that and uh, because on the cloner objects I have a rate on them they move about and uh, if I put the camera back to there you can see you'll see that uh, all the spheres move around and they flash on and off as well. So if you look down here, I've got um, 12 different materials and basically it's two different materials. It's this one here and this one here that I've then copied a number of times and then just offset um, some parameters in them. So the green material, which does the connectors is basically a luminance with a noise filter on it. And uh, each noise filter has a different seed so they just basically act slightly differently um, they're the same same material just um, with a different seed and then these ones here which go on the nodes uh, just have a luminance of red and then that is uh, animated and then that animation is looped um, and then each one when I copied them I then just kind of offset the animations and played about with them randomly in the uh, in the dope sheet so now we've got uh, eight node materials and four uh, connection materials. Um, let me zoom back out of this. You can see it kind of, it will flash on and off uh, randomly and move these little sort of green spheres about. Um, and how did I generate this? I, I could have generated it, as I said, by making it um, and copying it all around and getting all the points right. Uh, but I wanted it to be dynamic. I wanted to be able to add in more nodes without having to do a huge amount of work. Um, so I decided to go the coding route. Now, I'd never done any coding in Python before. I'd never written a single line in Python, and I'd never written anything inside Cinema 4D. Um, but I can program in a few languages, um, so I wasn't put off. I thought I'd give it a go. So this is my first ever Python code. Um, to create this uh, artificial neural network visualization. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole code. Um, I will make it available in the description um, so you can go through it and you can see I've pretty much sort of annotated all of it with comments so you can read through it and uh, hopefully work out what's going on. And also, if you improve it, uh, please you know, leave your version in the comments and let me have it back because there's loads of things we can do with this and um, it would be great to connect some of these uh, initial variables to um, some user data. Um, something like that would be fantastic and it's something I might do at a later stage, you never know, in a video. I'll just go through some basics of how the setup works. We have uh, these variables up here and a variable there. So this variable here is just uh, the name of the uh, null that we're gonna put the whole uh, neural network inside. And then all of these here basically set the behaviors of it. So layer spacing basically says how far apart the layers are. Node spacing is how far apart the nodes are. Connector bulge max is the distance in the uh, the bulge between the bottom of the bulge and the top of the bulge. Uh, nodes per layer is an array, uh, which is a bit like a list. I know lists and arrays are different in programming terms, but um, for the kind of non-techie people out there, this is basically like a list of numbers. 
that tell us how we're going to have the node layout. So in this one, we've got a uh, six, four, four, and then two that are off the screen. Um, so if we change that, it would give us a, a new layout. We'll do that in a bit. And then I've got here the metable size and the metable threshold. That's if you want to use uh, a metable over the um, spheres in the cloner. That kind of gives it a gloopy feel to it, which can look quite nice, but it also slows down the um, the play. So while I was um, doing it for my video, I turned the metaball off and just kind of set all my cameras up and then regenerated it at the end um, with the metaballs on. Um, CLS count is the clone account per spline. So each spline here has a certain amount of these uh, spheres on the cloner and I've set that to 100 so there'll be 100 spheres along that uh, cloner of all different sizes. Uh, the node radius is how big um, these nodes are, the radius of these nodes which are just spheres. The node connection offset basically moves the, uh, the point where it connects to the node away from the center so that you're not getting them all going in at random places. Um, along the node it just looked a bit nicer like that so i put an offset in it um the node mats and con mats that's short for node materials and connection materials these uh is basically an array of the names of the materials down here for the nodes and the names of the materials down here for the uh connections uh, so if you wanted to have all different materials on these randomly assigned and different connections, let's say uh, you want to have a load of blue ones as well, uh, you could do that and add them in here and then add in the names in these arrays and it would randomly assign them. So that, that's, uh, that's quite fun to do. Um, and then we've got uh, CL spheres is basically the cloner spheres. So these are the sizes of all the different spheres that it randomly puts inside the uh, cloners to clone across the splines. Um, and I've got it 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0 0.7. Um, and the last one is use metaball, which at the moment is false. So if I just set that to true, I can show you um, the difference. Um, if I shut that now, I've set that to true. I'm going to delete the uh, existing neural network and um, false update and uh, there we go we should have a new one appear and uh, we'll be able to see that that's now metaboard so all of that looks much more gloopy but it plays incredibly slowly as you can see which is why for the purposes of working with it um, I set that to false and uh, now we get it and it will actually play a lot smoother so yeah basically to get this on here i'm going to leave that there but you would um, go to here and go to python generator and it would add in a python generator which by default gives you a cube object and if you were to copy and paste this code into uh, into this window here or open it up and paste it into that window there um, it would generate this uh, this nice little neural network visualization to the specifications that you set in those parameters at the top um, so I'm just going to have a little play about with some of these so we can um, you can see what I mean so if I wanted to make it a layer of four and then a layer of three and then a layer of two um, I'm not going to use the metaball and I'm going to make the uh, the node radius 20 so the nodes are going to be bigger and the node spacing is going to be um, 120 um, and the layer spacing is going to be 180 so we're just going to mess around with some of these uh, I'm going to bring down that offset the node connection offset so that the, uh, the connectors go inside the nodes a little bit more and then if I delete that um, go back to zero and uh, there it is we've got a new one where the nodes are bigger um, and the uh, the connectors are a little bit closer I'm 
and see what that looks like. Very nice. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of the rest of the code in any kind of detail. If you're interested in that, obviously you can read through the code or try and improve it or tell me where I've gone wrong on some of it. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, and if you're not into the code and you just want to play about with layouts and, and let's say, well, we're going to go for really, really sort of small nodes and, you know, we're going to go for sort of 12 by 8 by 8 by 4 by 2. So we're going to have a big layout and we're going to have the node spacing of these only... Um, 60 across and we're going to have the layer spacing only sort of 80 across and just you know play about with it uh, the look and the layout we'll go to there uh, have a look there you can see it appears there it's um, zooming out it's taking quite a bit of time I think all those cloners and they're all going to uh, take a certain amount of processing power but as you can see that has um generated a lot bigger network than uh, the previous one you can have a look and oh, that looks uh, that looks pretty cool you probably want to play with some of the focusing of the camera and get that bit sharper um, and as I said earlier we could in theory make a, uh, a blue material so instead of green um, we could uh, we could change these to blue um, so we're going to go for a, like a light blue and a dark blue one and um, change the seed so it's it's different and then uh, I'm going to make this a BV5 so um, we could add that in to the code as another material BV5 um, and then delete Oh, in fact, I'm going to make the uh, network slightly smaller so it doesn't take so long to zoom in and out because this is just a demo after all. Uh, I'll make it 8, 4, 4, 2. So we're going to have four layers. Um, there we go. So nice little network there. Um, and you'll be able to see now there's uh, some blue connectors in that and uh, you animate that and, and obviously there's only one blue so if we wanted to make more of those we could copy them and offset them with the seed um, you could always do the same for the nodes we could make some of them turn green or turn blue by creating new materials here um, so it's, it's sort of it was what I needed it to do um, and I hope you get something out of the uh, the code and if you use it in one of your projects you know send me a link to it I'd love to see what you do with it Please subscribe, please like the video, please share it, and comment as well. I haven't had any comments. This is a very new channel, only a handful of views so far, and only a handful of videos. So who's going to be the first person to comment on one of my uh, videos? That will be a, that will be a day that I will crack open a bottle of water. Okay, see you on the next video. Cheers.